Hello everybody, welcome back to Unisk Tips. Thank you so much for joining me again. Today we are going to do a picture frame. I have done that uh, kind of picture frame in the past, uh, some time ago, and it was quite simple rectangular, still the same size, with uh, just a little bit of simple piping on it. This time we're going to do uh, one level up and we're going to do something much more elaborate and much more sort of like sophisticated and glamorous. So you can call this also like a vintage or baroque kind of picture frame. So um, I have done that with the uh, sort of like uh, using very simple tools like I use fork, I use just plastic knife. So I, I like to bring up to you that certain design that you have to also see that you can create something really glamorous without using sort of like a, a expensive tools and molds and etc. Uh, I have 600 gram pastillage which is uh, will be wonderful material that uh, can be used for this kind of things and I have two roller one is the uh, marker roller which has got some sort of lines and texture on it I will create the sort of like a, a canvas that with the cloth like a a typical classic canvas like when when people paint on it you can see the cloth cloth sort of like a texture on it. so i will try to create something like that and i have a straight roller also pvc pipe to roll the pastillage i will have a long threaded rod which is more than the one length so i'm going to use this one to give some textures and i have scissor a fork a plastic knife and then the transparent ruler which is very important because sometimes you place the ruler on the line and you want to see that how far you have to away from that line that you can cut so that you can see at the same time two, two lines at the same time all right so I have a craft knife and a little bit of realizing to glue the parts together and then uh, this is I believe this is Noki sort of like a roller or, or pusher or something also people I see that doing the butter with that so that is not really necessary to have it but I will have it so if you don't have that you can use also simple long threaded rod. This is, I think, M10, all right? Uh, so I have here a sugar in the edible luster gold. So I'm gonna use this and I will use brush and then oil spray will help me to also uh, sort of like uh, stick that uh, gold luster on the surface much more, much better. And uh, what I'm aiming is sort of like really elastic looking uh, the frame, which is not completely gold covered. It has to be like a shade of gold everywhere. And then the uh, water spray will help me to stick things together also. So that is it. So uh, what I want to do now, uh, explain a little bit more about that. So I started with the A5 size uh, page, sort of like this is exactly half of the A4 page. That is will be my uh, my sort of like a canvas which this picture was sitting on. This is edible image with a sort of like some sort of like a painting. It's beautiful. I don't know who this belongs. So after that uh, we will have a frame uh, which is if I'm not messing up I'd like to show you. So that's the frame. So when you when you place this one over here over the black uh, background you see that this is smaller than the out outline and then bigger than the uh, center line. So this is exactly the center line here. That's the size. So when I place on top, you can see exactly how big is it. So that the the background has to be uh, has to stop in the middle of the frame somewhere. All right. So then what I have here, that picture, that picture. If I cut exactly from the edge, that will even sit over here smaller than that. So that means the picture will end up end up between between the center line and the edge here in the middle. So I will have still enough uh, sort of like a, a distance that I can glue the picture into the right place that I can see it behind without any sort of like gap in between. I will also around here will have enough uh, place that I can glue the, uh, the, the canvas to the picture frame. So why I need to do this because I don't want to have, I don't want to glue this one to the sugar and after that uh, on top with the other side because this will release the release the sugar it will not not going to be sort of like a secure it's not going to glue properly so i i will explain you this one later again what i'm talking maybe it's quite difficult to understand at the moment all right so uh what else happening here those ornaments uh, as you see here let's say let's say a uh, kind of simulation that's the picture that's the picture 
goes on that uh, sugar piece. That, that comes on top here like that. And then these kind of uh, sort of additions will be stick on that frame like that. It looks quite uh, interesting at the end, right? So I have done that before just to find out how big are all those pieces, but I will use most of it, but I'm not gonna use one of the corner, one of this corner. I will do that all from the view again. So uh, what I do now, I'm just gonna start rolling the pastillage, give some texture and start cutting this one. And I will roll another one straight, uh, not straight, uh, sort of like a long sticks that I'm gonna give some textures I'll show you now. First start the, the canvas with that, with that roll. So I just find out that picture that uh, oil painting is, uh, I think is oil painting, uh, done by Jana Golikova. So the credit to him or her, I'm not so sure the, the genre, but it's beautifully done. So, okay, then uh, what we have here, uh, that texturing uh, marker, you see that this like a, gives a, I'm not happy with this because I have to make it much more finer. So I go a couple of times in different directions like that. So once I place that sugar print on here, I, I will see some of this uh, texture on the surface. All right. So that's ready. I place this here. I better place here and cut. Otherwise I have to move, maybe it will be distorted. All right, let's go. Done. All right, so that is ready. I'm not gonna place the picture on it because I want this to get nice and dry. So this will be later on. It will be um, tomorrow, day after, tomorrow. All right, so I will, I will have a very special way of doing this, this frame. Just like, just like the picture frames uh, in real life, uh, they are actually long pieces. They cut exactly on 45 degrees and then join them together. So I'm gonna do this one exactly like that. The previous frame I did, it was all one piece. So this time I'm gonna give some texture, some profile and cut them in 45, join them together. It is much better, all right? So uh, let me just go through a couple of them. And then before I'm finished, I will show you exactly what to do. Okay, I have done two long pieces, and I'm gonna continue doing the other two short piece. All right? So I roll the pastillage exactly uh, five millimeters in thickness. Let's put this one aside so we don't disturb that. All right. So those uh, thickness guidance, it's a good idea to use it because picture frame has to be really precise to make it realistic. Okay, this is already five. All right. Okay, now. What I do? One straight cut first. Clean knife. Wet, dry. One clean cut first. All right. We don't need that part. All right. Now, second thing is uh, that uh, part here with the lines is actually low set. So what I like to do, I'm gonna push that uh, roller on the edge downwards, right? just like this, all right? Like this, okay? Then after that, there's a groove here nicely. I place my long threaded rod, and then this is a quite strong bar. I push it strong enough to get a nice even uh, indentation like this. Right? After that, I place my roller where the lines are finished, downwards, to make sort of like a, a one flat frame, which is the beginning of the inner side of the frame. Okay, that's it. 
Then what I do, I place my ruler here, just about a millimeter and a half, exactly here on the edge. Okay. Then cut this and remove that part. All right. Come on. That's it. And then I need to have one more line right behind that uh, long to the rod marking. Sort of like, but make sure there's only you pushing single line, not double line. Okay, just the one time push nicely like this, everywhere the same, same thickness, beautiful. Then I measure the exact uh, thickness here, all right, and uh, I do one millimeter more, doesn't matter. Okay. So place your hand there and then one time cut. Perfect. All right, so this one goes to here for cutting later on. I do one more time. All right, now watch this, push it down. Somewhere there, All right? Nicely, and then place that long to the, exactly where this where this heel stopped. Evenly push. Okay, done. After that, this one comes here. Push again one more time. Make it flat. See, I can see from the transparent ruler how much I'm pushing. That's great. I didn't push enough in the middle. That's good. Now, it's about this much. That's cut. Then the mark line, another one behind. Good. Quite simple. Yes, that's done. So now I'm going to get a piece of small paper and fold in 45 degrees to make the corner exactly right to join together. So the task is quite simple. This frame goes around here like this, all right? Here like that. I don't want to cut it because I cannot see the line underneath. So I'm just gonna put over here, opposite, outside the frame, all right? Opposite. So that marking is inside, this is now outside, all right? Very simple. And then I take a piece of paper, fold this part exactly into two. It was 90 before, now it's 45. Half of 90 is 45. That's it. Then I place this here. Exactly there. Make sure it's a very clean cut. Okay, that's done. Place this here now. That's it. That's 45. Next one.
So, two is finished. And I will do exactly the same thing for the long ones. Place them separately. Then we will join this together with you. Okay, let's join this time together. Put a little bit of realizing here. Right. I also place that on the plastic so the realizing doesn't stick on the on the cutboard. Right. Nice and clean. Alright, this one here. Yes, perfect join. Alright. Then this. All right, now, as you see that the, the uh, passenger is still flexible, it's just going out of the, the squarish shape. So what we have to do now, we have to really look into that. Find something this not straight. straight that's now straight okay now what I like to do I'm going to glue all those things I'm gonna start doing it now I'm gonna finish about one half and the other one I'll show you and then I will show you after that we're gonna do freshly without using that uh, one corner here one corner here so you know exactly what to do okay these three corner already uh, fixed so I'm going to do one more corner here. There is a little bit of realizing here, a little bit of here. Make sure there's like there's a connection, right, right in the corner. Pipe some here. Put one of this stuff here. There's the corner, right? Then pipe inside some. This one some. All right, and then here I think this is nicer. Broken. Let's go like that. So this one has to come around that direction. Am I right? Yes. Let me see, is there anything better than that? Yep, that one. And That one. That's good. So, we have already some pipe inside. Pipe here. There. And then pipe some here. And there. So, I'm going to condition my passengers. Come back to you while I'm doing this. I already conditioned my passage and also uh, weigh all the pieces according to the gram. So the corners are six gram and this part, this corners, this extension is about three gram. That means six gram divided by two. And this is also six gram. And these parts are uh, half of the half, the one and a half gram. So these little pieces, which I did already five, uh, you don't need to weigh because this is a very small piece. You can just estimate by just eye. Okay, I just take the six gram first. Watch this very carefully. It doesn't matter how much you condition your passage, as soon as you, you have to condition again just before you use it. All right? So mix a little bit in your hand. If you want, you can put a little bit of oil, just a little bit. All right? After that, do this. All right? And then around. Just make a bullet shape like this. All right? And then put it over here. This part, push it down. All right, a little bit of starch maybe. Okay, and then use the fork. Push it down. Make sure that you get that good sort of like a indentation here. And after that, cut this piece in two, this part. Remove from table. And then separate like that. 
slightly pinch and then make the curls. It's very easy. And this part also slightly turn inwards. So this will go to this corner. All right, done. Next one. I'm not going to glue. I will glue when the, everything is finished. Same thing again. Push it down. Push the fork. So very important that I am not dragging the fork. I'm just pushing down. Get this sort of like a, a pattern in the center. All right. Okay. Done. So I don't want to have too much in here. Just cut this one like that, and this one like that. All right. Because this corner is not in the corner, so it, you need shorter than that. All right. So uh, this one, turn it like that. Don't wait too long, otherwise uh, we'll be crack on, on here. Pasta does, you have to work quickly with that. So this one goes to here, and then we just uh, carry on with the other extensions. This one, we don't need it. Maybe we need it for these little pieces. All right, take everything out. Don't need to protect so long. All right, this one now is three gram each side. Cut in two pieces, approximately, three gram each. Okay, push down, then use plastic knife. Imagine one line in the center, slightly left, and then one, two. Slightly left, so you, you keep the one center sort of like a vein in the middle, and then make sure that the old line's joining in one corner. Do this, all right, and after that, remove it, take in the hand, all right, and here, just cut that grooves with a scissor, a little bit, not all the way in, and then make this part sharp. Okay, now, so this one uh, is like, a, you have to understand the S shape. It goes like that and like that. So this is what I'm going I'm to do, like that, all right? So as soon as you bend it, the, the corners that what we cut with the scissor, it's already separate itself it looks much more nicer, all right? This one goes here, all right? And the other side. All right. Like that. Again. Push, 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 push. Take in the hand. Cut the sides, make the end bit sharp. This can be used also a nice leaf. All right, this one goes to like this. Like that, all right. Then comes the 1.5 gram. That means this is three gram, cut in two, 1.5. This time we can only use that the tip of the plastic knife to make this one a little bit more so obvious. Alright, and then don't use scissors, just cut this one like that. This one like that. Remove. This one goes a little bit more inwards here. Like that. That's it. Another one. Like that. 
right. These ones are very simple. Just use that Nokia, Nokia uh, pusher or roller. Small little bullet like this. Push it down. And after that, turn the end bit like this. Just little, little C shapes. You need about seven. I have six over here already. Like that. That's it. All right. Let's go them now. Lift it up. Put a bit of relaxing here. And glue. Bit of relaxing here underneath. A little bit here. Push it in. Glue the end bits. Push it in. Glue the end bits. Sorry, done. Now this one here. A little bit here, a little bit there. Okay, all that's left here, this ends, one, two, three, four, five. So, one is here, one is there, one is here. I'm just filling up to corners, all right. One here. One there, a little bit here, a little bit there, after that, one here, and one there. That's it. Basically what I follow just the symmetric, symmetrical shelf arrangements, all right? That's uh, our frame is already. Next step is just worry about the uh, gold work. Hello again. This is the second day of the progress. I like to continue with the assembling of this beautiful picture frame. So uh, first thing to do, I'm going to get this picture on the canvas, glue it with the water. So look at this frame. Uh, over the night, it dries. It's nice and dry. It is not 100% sort of like bone dry, but you just have to be careful still uh, when you're handling it, even as the next day. All right. So uh, water will be placed over here, a little bit sprayed. And then do not make a pool of water, just touch like that, make it a little bit sticky, all right? Make sure that everywhere, same kind of uh, sort of like stickiness. If you make it too wet, it will sort of like bleed the colors into the picture. I'm using my fingertips because I like to feel the amount of mixture instead of just using the brush. Okay, this is already done, all right. So what do we do? We just cut this exact from edge. This is a good quality uh, sugar uh, sugar sheet. Some of them comes with a very thin, and it's, it's already melt when you put a bit of moisture. So this is very, very good quality one. You just have to ask for thicker sugar sheet. So this is just comes off very easily without any hassle. Come on, that's it. So, holding from both ends, like this, and then finding the right place. Make sure the frame everywhere the same amount left. Okay. That's it. It's done. So, I like to continue now, the coloring my picture frame. So, I have already tried uh, I like to achieve a kind of gold, but sort of like a rustic, sort of like an aged kind of uh, picture frame. Not a very shiny, uh, sort of brilliant gold. I want to have like a shade of gold on the frame. So this is what I like to do. I'm going to use the, uh, the edible luster, luster dust. Uh, it's super gold, it's gold. All right, sugar in brand. So uh, it, it comes out like really nice to the color. So what I like to do, I'm going to apply a little bit of oil on the frame. All right. This will make it, the luster works much better, all right? So then after that, I take my brush. I want to have solid gold on this inner edge.
take your time. Target always small areas. This oil helped me to make this rustic look because when I go over with the brush it will cover nicely but when I go a few times I'll remove some of the gold and it will make it like look like aged sort of like decorations right all right let's go uh, the edge is finished now I'm gonna go for the corners just be nice and gentle and also like a generous at the beginning after the beginner remove This is beautiful gold and edible. Okay, all the ornamental parts is finished. Now I go in between. Sort of like not so, not so ambitious on that areas. Sort of like go, go easy. Especially I want to get these lines visible nicely. Let me work it out not slowly. The sides a little bit. Okay. Now I just want to go over it. Remove the excess one. And also like I like to comes out with a bit of white shade over the sort of higher edges, right? Just be gentle, uh, be gentle with the brush because brush will take out the glue part. I think we are almost there. I don't I don't want to leave too much dust on the on the surface that when we carry it out there and then will be maybe just a, uh, just drop on the on the picture that's why. I just want to make sure the brush touch everywhere. So this area like a bit of white coming out. That's what I like. All right, I like to put a little bit of chocolate around. Okay. All right, that thickness is quite good. So what I like to do, uh, as you see over here, the picture is actually bigger than the in inside of the frame. So it, you will not see any white frame around. But this part, that means from here to here, which is a, a, a five size, a five size, 
Uh, that means the inner side of the picture frame less than A5 size. A5 size is the complete canvas. And then after that, outer frame, outer side of the frame is bigger than the A5 size. So we have enough space over here to glue it underneath without disturbing anywhere else. So just pipe a little bit chocolate here on the empty area. Not too close to the picture because if you go close to the picture, it will maybe bleed inside. More on the sort of outer edge. Done. Don't take too much time. Lift up your frame carefully. All right. And then place it on. Beautiful. I'm very happy with that, with that sort of like aged and that sort of like a, a root or sort of like a, how you call, it? yeah, I can call this aged sort of like the, with the white spots coming out. This is really, looks very nice. So as I promised uh, previously, uh, when I was doing this azel, sugar azel video, uh, I was, I said, I'm going to do this uh, picture frame for you. So this is what I did. It is my uh, antique looking. So uh, I was looking, struggling for that word, antique looking vintage baroque style picture frame is now ready. Uh, it has been produced with Jenner's pastillage. And also I use the Sugar In Edible Luster Dust SP Gold. It is also worked very well on sugar with a little bit of additional oil. So you may ask me what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to place this on the cake with the, also with the painted palette uh, at the bottom here. So you have also another video for that. So. Uh, it was a short and nice and a kind of like a informative video. But uh, if you'd like to join me at yenesv.com, you will find our premium videos, which is much more longer. And also you will find the recipe alternate for uh, pasta you can do it yourself. And also if you are interested to design your cake and price your cakes in with the computer. So we have a just latest software called CakeNote. You can achieve that with that. So it's very interesting. I would like to invite you to go there uh, by www.cakenote.com. So you just check it out. So that is all from me, guys. Thank you so much for having me. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to be tuned with us. Uh, God bless you all. Until to my next tutorial. Bye for now.